Brian Fisher is going to prod into what he thinks Obama's religion really is. I, I don't know that I would, would call him a Christian. I think the best I could say is, about all I can say is I do not know what goes on inside Barack Obama's heart. But I do know that he is not a sincerely devoted follower of Jesus Christ. So in my mind, that means he's not a Christian. Because in my mind, a Christian is somebody who's a sincerely devoted follower of Christ. Barack Obama is not. Nobody can support and promote and celebrate homosexual behavior who is a sincerely devoted follower of Christ. It's impossible because Christ and his apostles made it very clear that that's a sin. You can't celebrate that, can't promote that, and call yourself a follower of Christ. Nor can you be a follower of Christ and support the practice of dismembering babies in the womb or support the practice of infanticide, as Barack Obama did as a state senator in Illinois. So if you're looking for a definitive answer to the question, uh, what I would say, Don, is President Obama is whatever he is, he is not a sincerely devoted follower of Jesus Christ. Now, with regard to him being a, a Muslim, you know, I've had people on Insiders in Washington, D.C., everybody back there says he is. You know, he walks like a Muslim, he talks like a Muslim, he sounds like a Muslim, he acts like a Muslim. You know, and if Jesus said, by your fruits, you shall know them, at some point, people are going to start connecting those dots. <laughs> Obama's a Muslim because he walks, talks, and sounds like a Muslim. Literally none of those things would make you a Muslim or not make you a Muslim. He walks, talks, and sounds, so how does a Muslim walk? <laughs> what do they have to say, Allahu Akbar, every step they take? What are you saying? Is how, how he walks, how he talks? Okay, I got news for you. People speak all different languages in all different places around the world. That doesn't make them one thing or another thing religiously. He sounds like a Muslim. Again, what does that mean? Do, do you have the White House uh, bugged right now? And he screams... A Mohammed, come in here. Ahmed, I need your help. The lack of logic from this man, I'm telling you, is legendary. But it shows you that he always works backwards from his conclusions. Which is, you know, he he's already concluded that he's probably a Muslim. So that means anything he says to back up that point is therefore, in his mind, acceptable and reasonable. Even though it makes absolutely no sense and he presented zero evidence for it. And these are the same people who attacked President Obama for going to Reverend Wright's church all those years. So you attack him for going to a church for all these years, but at the same time you say, no, he's a Muslim. So then do you, you just said he went to church all these years. What do you mean? He went to church and he was secretly reciting Quranic verses in his head? I don't understand what you're saying. It doesn't make any sense. And then look, I love this idea that everybody gets to define what everybody else is, right? Uh, he's not a Christian because I say so. People always do this all the time with all different religions. Like whenever there's uh, some a terrorist attack done by a Muslim in the name of Islam, you have some goofballs who say, no, they're not Muslim. They, they don't count. They're, they tell you they're Muslim. In fact, in some cases, they tell you they're doing it to avenge the prophet, said terrorist attack. They're not Muslims. They, it just doesn't count because I say so. No, in all cases, you can't just take the good ones and you can't just take the bad ones. Right? So... Uh, Brian, just because a Christian disagrees with you doesn't mean they're not a Christian. In fact, uh, I've recently opened my eyes to this in the sense that I've come to understand that it's true that people who are Christian are people who just call themselves a Christian. That's like the only thing that you need to do. People who are Muslim are just people who call themselves a Muslim. That's the only thing that you really need to do. And then within all these different groups and all these different religions, there's all different types of interpretations and belief systems, and it, and you can push for uh, tolerance and love and kindness and charity, or you could push for terrorism and genocide and violence. In the name of all these religions, we've had people who do both things. So, you have to take all of them. But I love his reasoning, though. Brian Fisher's reasoning. He's like, well, Obama uh, is not a Christian because he doesn't follow Jesus, because he's not anti-gay, and he's not anti-abortion. Well, Jesus never said anything about gay people. All the uh, anti-gay stuff is in the Old Testament. And by the way, that's, that doesn't mean that, you know, the people who are anti-gay aren't Christians. They're also Christian. 
There are plenty of Christians who are anti-gay, plenty of Christians who are pro-gay. But his argument is, he doesn't follow Jesus, and Jesus is anti-gay. <clears throat> That's wrong. And also, oh, Jesus, he's Obama's pro-abortion. You can't be a follower of Jesus and be pro-abortion. Oh, God. This is one of those issues that, like, literally nobody actually read the Bible. Nobody read it. Because we covered on this show, I gave you like five or six different passages from the Bible that are flat out in favor of abortion. God performs abortions at one point in Samaria. He goes all through Samaria and rips the fetuses out of the stomach of the women. That's God performing abortions. At another part of the Bible, they talk about how if a man suspects his wife cheats on her, you give her what's called bitter water, which is poison, and she drinks it. And then if she miscarries from drinking the bitter water, in other words, if she has an abortion from drinking the bitter water, that means the baby wasn't yours and it's good that you aborted. But if she drinks the bitter water and she doesn't uh, abort, well, then the baby was yours and it's okay. You can keep the baby and it, everything's all good. So that's God saying, hey, if your wife cheats on you, she's better get an abortion. This is all in the Bible, man. This is all in the Bible. But this idiot thinks he knows the Bible. He's like, oh, well, Jesus was anti-gay. <clears throat> And the Bible's obviously against abortion. <clears throat> Again, fucking read your holy book, man. But look, in conclusion, I think that's what's so dangerous about religions in general, is that you can have people in all different religions that support any ideology. You can have people do good things in the name of a religion, and they use scripture to back them up, but you also have people who can do terrorism and back it up with scripture. And this goes for all religions. And that's why it's dangerous, is that when you're convinced that you're doing God's will, you're doing God's work because of this book that says stuff that you really think comes from the Almighty and that you're carrying out His will on earth, you can act so wrongly, but you're convinced you're acting morally and justly and with virtue because you have the backing of said holy book. What we need to do is nip it all in the bud and say, all of you guys are silly. Whether you do stuff that's good in the name of religion or bad in the name of religion, that doesn't make the book true. In fact, it's false. If everybody woke up tomorrow and they were all the best people ever, and they all, all they cared about was charity and kindness and love and all that stuff, but they were doing it in the name of a lie, it's still a lie. It doesn't change the fact that it's, it's a lie. So that's what we need to get through as atheists and agnostics and secular people in general. We need to let people know... You can do and you should do all of this good stuff, all the charity, all the love, all the kindness. You can do all that stuff without pretending like seven-headed dragons exist and the earth is flat and, uh, you know, people fly bodily up to fucking heaven when they die and people live to age 930 years old like they do in the Bible.